Good morning guys, Unfrequented World, and I've done a couple of recent reviews for you guys on uh, Power Director 17. So what I want to do today is show you guys its companion, which is Color Director 7. This is the grading program that goes with Power Director, and um, I'm so enjoying Power Director and all of its tools that I went ahead and bought a copy of Color Director 7. And I just want to show you guys what you get in Color Director 7. And there is a, an issue that I'm having with the program and it's interchangeability with Power Director. They're supposed to be seamless and integrate into one another. And I'm going to show you guys a problem I'm having. And I do have a ticket open with Cyberlink to solve this. But if you use Color Director just by itself, um, everything works fine and it is an amazing little side program for color grading. So if we just bring a file in, I'll show you guys what this program is capable of. So up at the top you have your library, you can bring in all the clips you want. We'll just bring in one little short clip. We'll put it down here on the storyboard and then we'll go ahead and I'll show you guys under the adjustment tab all of the cool things and features that are available in um, power in color director uh, if we go under presets sorry they have all of the preset things that are already made so if you just want to pick something and enhance something that's already here you can do that they have a whole bunch of them already made and on the uh, power director site guys if you do the 365 membership you can download, there are thousands of these presets already made. So, I mean, you could pretty much probably find anything you need already made, and that's under presets. Okay, so under adjustments, and if we are in the manual tab, you now have full control of your clip. So these are all of the options, I'll just go through them very quickly. Uh, your regional adjustment tools here are your masking tools. So you can do a selection mask, a motion tracking mask, um, I believe this is gradient mask and radial mask. Okay, down here you can do simple things like white balance changes. Each one of these is broken into a section. So you've got a tone section, a white balance section, and all of the others underneath. And you'll notice if you have a check mark here, if you remove the check mark, then you can't play with any of these things in that section. Okay, so if you want to lock it and say, oh, I make sure I don't touch any of those, you just remove the check mark. If you make a change that you don't like, each section has a back arrow, so you can just click back. I'll just show you what else is here, guys. There's white balance, tone, tinges, uh, dehaze is a good one. Uh, if you're shooting stuff on DSLRs, which I do a lot, a little bit of dehaze. See, you can bring in, it just basically uh, changes your contrast a little bit. I mean, there's all kinds of effects in here. There's uh, HDR effects, glow. Um, edge effects, it's almost like a sharpen effect, um, like a sharpen mask. We'll just crank that so you can hopefully kind of see what's going on there. It almost adds like a film grain effect, I find, that one. Um, then you have all of your uh, RGB channels. You can change all of them with this top one, or you can change each individual one down here. So if you wanted to do just red... And then, of course, the resets. Your curve uh, adjustments are all here. And down here we have sharpness and noise reduction. It's a full, uh, it's a full package, this color director, guys. Okay, so in color director, let's render out an image. Uh, we'll, we'll, make a, we'll make a change, save it as a preset, and render this video out and show you guys the final product. Then we want to do the same thing by importing the preset that we've made in Color Director into Power Director. And I'll show you the issue that I'm having. So let's just pick something crazy like we'll select a color. We'll take the nice setting sun here. And we'll change the hue of it to something crazy so that we'll, we'll be able to see it. Now if you want to see an effect change that you've made, you have to highlight the whole clip and click render preview and that will go ahead and it's going to take eight minutes or I don't know four minutes to render out this preview then you can click play 
and it will play through the whole clip and it'll show you the deer moving through the forest with the nice green sky. So we don't really need to do that. We're just going to go ahead and create a file. So now if you click down here in the bottom, this is the effect we want. If you click create and then go to preset, we can give it a name and we'll just call it blue sky. And we're just going to save it. And that brings us automatically, it opens up the preset window and we'll see in here we have my created presets. I've already created one before which was just a color uh, enhancement and then now we have blue sky underneath it which is the one we just created. So if we click on the production tab we can now render out this 40 second clip Let's see how long it's going to actually take to do it. We'll pick uh, AVC. Now, here's the other issue that I had with Color Director. Um, why I didn't want to render using Color Director itself was that it didn't have all of the options that I really wanted. So we'll pick uh, 1920 by 30. They've only got 16 megabits a second, which I like to do everything a little bit, quite a bit higher than that actually. But so, so there is another way, and that's to seamlessly integrate this into your Power Director where you get all of your production tools. However, there's a problem with that. So for now, we're just going to render out this 30p16. Um, we're going to use hardware video encoding, and we're going to click start. Okay, so that took about a minute and a half, guys, to render that out. It's just finishing. And once it's done, we now have the file here on the desktop. And there's the finished file with the green sky and the changes we made. Okay, so we're going to rename this because we're going to produce another one of these. Okay, so we're going to open... Power Director, and we're going to import the same clip. We're going to drag it down to the timeline, and now when we click on Fix and Enhance, um, once you've purchased Color Director, it now shows up as a tab right here um, beside your normal Fix and Enhance tools. And if you click that, it's going to start Color Director. It automatically brings our clip down to the timeline that we were enhancing. And we can take that default that we made blue sky. It's already here. Click on it. And then we can go ahead. And if we go back, it'll take us back into Power Director. And we can see that the clip in the preview window now has those changes made to it. Okay, if we scroll ahead on the timeline, the changes are still there. So this is where, that's one way to do it. And this is where I have the issue. When we go to produce this file now, and this is what I like about PowerDirector is we have all of the options, and I've made a custom profile. If we look at, um, if we go to edit this, you guys will see that right here. I've saved it as 30 frames and 28,000 bit rate, which is what my Sony cameras shoot at. Um, so I would choose to render this file in PowerDirector every time over ColorDirector because I have full control over my final output settings. The problem is that even though the color change is showing up in the program, when we click down here and render it out, look how fast this renders. It's not actually making the change to the file because here's the file that we just produced and the changes are not there. So being the troubleshooting guy that I am, I have tried to solve this a few ways on my own. So what I did was we'll just remove the file we created. We'll remove this from the 
uh, timeline. And we're going to start over. I'll show you guys the second way that I did this. We're going to close Color Director. That's already closed, actually. So this is the second way that I tried to troubleshoot this was directly in within Power Director here. Um, if you go to Fix and Enhance, and we're not going to click on the Color Director tab this time. What I've done is I actually uploaded from Color Director that preset that I made um, called Gary's Default. So we won't have the blue sky one in here, but I have another one, one that I downloaded and uh, one that I created. I sent it up to the cloud, then I went online and downloaded it just to Power Director itself, leaving Color Director out of the loop entirely. And if we click on Color Presets down here, it will show you, you can download more from the cloud right here with this button, or you can, I've already done it. If you've downloaded a couple, they'll show up here. So the one I made was a nice darkening of the colors and more saturation. So you can see the changes right there, guys. A nice bright yellow versus the plain, what the camera shot. That's the one I created. I also downloaded this uh, Super 5. Okay, so now we're not in Color Director, remember that. So we're going to apply uh, Gary's default. And you look down here in the timeline, the nice yellow, it, it is showing. This is with the changes. If we go to Produce, and we click on our file to start down here at the bottom, the same thing happens again. So this is the this is the first file we produced within Color Director. This is the second one. No changes. We've got that flat, washed out DSLR look. It's not applying the changes. So um, I'm not knocking Color Director. There's some issue here that needs to be worked out. It could be a user error, but I don't think so because I've tried multiple ways to get that to work. But if you're using Color Director just by itself. Um, this, it has all of the options. It's a full featured program as I showed you guys. Um, just that one little um, caveat at the end, we've got to get that fixed where we can't actually render out the files within PowerDirector 17. So I can't give it a full, you know, 9 out of 10 kind of thing, but I'll give it a 7 out of 10 right now because all of the features are there and you can create them and render within ColorDirector. It's just not working when I put it in PowerDirector. So I will give you guys an update. Uh, Cyberlink was very good. They got back to me right away. And they've requested a bunch of uh, DX dialog files. I actually had to render a movie and record it for them. So they're very hands-on and they are trying to help me. And as soon as I get an answer, I'll let you guys know what's going on. But I would recommend if you're using PowerDirector 17, ColorDirector 7 is a fantastic tool to go with it. So thanks for watching, guys.